Milwaukee's health commissioner is leaving to take a job with the Washington, D.C. health policy think tank. And she's got some things to say on her way out. In June, Dr. Jeanette Kowalik told me that she's experienced racism in her job. So I definitely will provide more detail on what that means whenever I'm out of this role because I'm kind of limited in things that I can say because I'm a public official. In the city county coronavirus briefing last week, Kowalik said the public health field needs more diversity. So we're talking now one more time with Dr. Jeanette Kowalik, and we appreciate you stopping with us here at Upfront. So what can you tell us in terms of the racism you faced? I'm, I'm really curious if these were people within your department or outside the department. What happened? Oh, uh, thank you for having me once again. And yes, I was like, well, I had to be careful about what I say while I was still in the job. And technically, I still am. Uh, my last day is the 22nd. Uh, so I need to be mindful of um, revealing any specific individuals or um, uh, affiliations because that would um, create some issues. So, uh, but what I can say is this, that when we talk about racism, um, oftentimes people think of like very uh, specific acts, like intense types of um, forms of racism, where you know people are, um, you know, clans people or people with Dixie flags and things like that. That's like more like um, of a higher level or different level. And when I'm talking about racism, I'm talking about a variety of levels of racism, whether they're um, uh, microaggressions, um, various um, micro uh, invalidations, uh, micro insults, um, you know, being cut out of important conversations, being cut out of uh, various opportunities to make decisions, um, so on and so forth. So some of these things were happening before COVID, but obviously COVID is the great magnifier. So it has really enhanced um, what was already going on. So um, when I talk about um, the racism that I've experienced, it's pretty much all across the board. And I think that it's important for people who live in the city to know if there are people acting who, who work for the city of Milwaukee, who, who were racist towards you. So should we expect, are you filing any formal complaints against anyone that we should know about? Um, that's still in discussion right now because of the nature of the situation. So I can't reveal more about that, but I do want to just acknowledge again that the city and the county declared racism as a public health crisis. And as a part of doing that last year, that there are still some action items that have uh, to be addressed. So part of those um, items are uh, needs assessments, uh, evaluating hiring practices, professional development, um, policies and practices that our departments have, and then of course, uh, advocating for a policy and practice change in our community. So a lot of those things were just getting off of the ground and then COVID hit. Um, granted, we were able to use that um, increased awareness and perception to help us with our COVID response to prioritize sharing race and ethnicity data for COVID from the beginning. But there was still work that needed to be done within our own um, organizations that we weren't able to necessarily fulfill. I found this AP article that says at least 49 state and local public health leaders have resigned, retired, or been fired just since April across 23 states. Why do you think that is? Why is there all this pushback? Well, um, public health professionals, especially when you're the uh, administrator or the boss of a health department, we have codes of ethics and things that we have to abide by, just like any other profession. So. My, my understanding of what is happening is that there's a fundamental difference in values and ethics and beliefs related to public health and this pandemic and politics in general. So um, some of my colleagues have um, moved out of their positions or been forced out of their positions because they've refused to uh, adjust their values to align with whoever is in charge. And um, I just want to just say this too, because and you know, I know there hasn't been a lot of discussion about it, but within our state, our state health officer left this summer. And we don't know the details behind what happened, but we do know that that has created a gap. And 
you know, all of us at the local level, you know, you lean on the, your state health department to provide guidance um, to make sure you're getting uh, resources and information. And by having disruption in that position uh, definitely has impacted us at the local level. Okay, Dr. Kowalik, thank you and good luck with your new job. Thank you. Next, a tightening race for president in Wisconsin. And I'll talk to Senator Kamala Harris in her first campaign visit here.